the court should never accept a filing of a claim without the wet ink note. So they are committing fraud against us, fraud upon the court, and fraud all around. So I, yeah. You need to turn that off. It, I really. Now, Governor John Lynch appointed smiling Kelly Ayotte as AG. And while she was there, before she was a U.S. Senator, she presided over the largest consumer fraud in New Hampshire history. And that's the tip of the iceberg, as my blog shows. Now look, I'm an attorney who's won you know, civil rights trials and you know, ran a title company. I've changed First Amendment policy in Nashua, had a mayoral commendation. And I wrote Kelly A.I. and I told her, look, somebody forged my name to a mortgage and faxed it off for funding. That's called wire fraud. She did nothing. Now she hangs her head in shame. We're here at kingcast.net, back at the courthouse. Tell us what just happened, folks. Who are you and what just happened in this courthouse today? <laughs> oh, I didn't know we were being interviewed. Well, we just um, came in to stop a, a $41,000 restraining order and move it over into a, um, a motion for the court to order, to compel the parties, the defendants, as to who has the true standing in the issue of foreclosure. Because they sold my house last week with no proof of standing whatsoever. They didn't even tell me on whose behalf they were selling the house. Just the lawyer came in and felt it was their right to just uh, seize the property. What was the lawyer's name that told you about the sale? The name of the, it was Andrea Coffey from Sheckman, Halprin and Savage LLP. Do you know who they represent? They represent uh, AMC, American Home Mortgage Servicing, Inc., and also Wells Fargo Bank N.A. as trustee for the Option 1 2006-1 Trust. I reviewed the file, and I did see where there seems to be a, a second conveyance coming from uh, Wells Fargo to, I'm sorry, coming from the, the, the first mortgage company, which was Merrimack, Merrimack yeah. to Wells Fargo yeah. twice, yeah. and I asked counsel about that matter in the hallway. He didn't want to speak on camera. And I asked him, how can you twice convey something? How, in other words, how can you convey that which you don't have, that which you don't have? And I've done a couple hundred residential real estate closings and I didn't understand that. He didn't explain it to me and he said that there's something in the court file or in the registry of deeds that would explain it. Have any of you seen anything that explains that? No, we just saw the different assignments in sequence and the two came one after the other with nothing in between reinstating um, Merrimack to, to go ahead and make another assignment. They already assigned it once to option one. You need to turn that off. But why Here with KingCast.net, and we're looking at paragraph four of the affidavit of Ann Willett. It appears that there's an assignment made there at subsection A, assignment from Merrimack Mortgage to option one, and then there's another assignment to Wells Fargo, and it doesn't appear that option one ever reassigned or sent it back to Merrimack Mortgage, so I'm confused about that, so I'm going to ask Ms. Willett to clarify that. Hey guys, don't want to interrupt too long, but um, is this Ann Willett? No. Oh, I'm trying Listen, to play. I, yeah. You need to turn that off. It, I really... Will you talk to me off record? What's that? Will you talk to me off record? I'll talk to you off record. Okay. Well, that's fine. Why not on record? You need to turn that off. But why, I'm just asking you, why not on record? I mean, you got to go into open court and discuss hey, I, it on record. Hey, I don't know who you are. I told you, KingCast.net. I, I, started I, Alpha, even, I started Alpha Title Company here a number of years ago. I've done a couple hundred real estate closings, and I'm just curious as to a couple of questions. Well, then I'll be happy to answer a couple of questions once you turn that off. Very well, counsel. Ha, ah, but when we spoke off record, this lawyer uh, for Merrimack Mortgage couldn't tell me anything. You know, who's got the note? Where's the missing assignment? Nothing. So the case just ricocheted around like a pinball. You know, where's the note? Where's the mortgage? Who's got the right to foreclose? Uh, 
Um, Mr. King, I assume that you uh, desire to film in the courtroom, is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. As per your earlier pronouncement regarding our civil liberties, yes, that is correct. Well, specifically what he said about four years ago was that my courtroom video was nonsense. Well, I don't know. I keep track of him, and you know, I think what he does sometimes is nonsense as well. But in any event, he got rid of us today, uh, got rid of me and the pesky litigant who was questioning the establishment. He kicked us downstairs, and there you have it. You know, it's time to go. You want to hear it, Judge Lynn? Mm-mm. Neither does he. Let's kick it downstairs. Uh, I read Judge Lynn's order, and, uh, and I assume that was issued without a hearing on the matter. Is that right? That's right. Okay. And so my first question, I guess, is whether you complied with the order to keep the injunction in place. Well, the order was for me to show up with $41,000 in order to keep a temporary restraining order in place. It's my understanding, uh, my awareness of it. And, um, I would suggest that um, it seems to me, I know it's difficult to be fair and equitable on both parties, but um, wouldn't it have been more fair to require that the bank produce the original wedding signature note to put in the escrow account uh, to balance the $41,000 that he demands of me? And the $41,000 is uh, for the bond. And um, under our rules of court, a judge has to uh, issue an injunction, require that somebody post security when an injunction is issued. Because an injunction is an extraordinary remedy. I'm assuming that's why Judge Lynn issued that. You can tell me, um, from your perspective, why you shouldn't or can't pay. But, um, but you're the person who's moving for the injunction. So I'm assuming that's why he directed the relief at you. Um, well, if that's the cost for the temporary restraining order, then I would like to drop the temporary restraining order and move the court to um, drop the temporary restraining order and order the defendants to prove standing. Um, the point being that they uh, allegedly sold my house last Monday when they gave me no shred of paperwork to say that anything about the sale. They didn't tell me on whose behalf they were foreclosing. There is no party in standing in any of the paperwork to show me who they were foreclosing on. And um, so, so without the, proof of standing. So let me stop for one moment. So the foreclosure sale went forward. So Allegedly. I haven't seen a single piece of paper on it. I haven't gotten any. Did the foreclosure sale go forward? Uh, Your Honor, I have no idea whether the foreclosure went forward or I not. I have no idea whether the foreclosure sale went forward. Because my client, Your Honor, Merrimack Mortgage, is a respondent in this case, um, presumably because they were the company originally involved with this loan transaction and back in 2005. So is anyone here representing American Home Mortgage? I, I've not seen anybody. Okay. Okay. Anyone here for uh, Sheckman or Helper? I don't think so. Okay. And do you have any objection to me lifting this injunction? Uh, Merrimack Mortgage takes no position on uh, on the relief side. Like I said, has had no um, no involvement in the servicing of this loan uh, for several years. Is not involved in the foreclosure process at all. Assigned a mortgage uh, very shortly after the closing and has been essentially no involvement whatsoever. So tell me what you know about the chain of, of, uh, of uh, mortgage. What I know, Your Honor, is what uh, what is on file at the registry, which is the uh, which was reflected in uh, the response we filed uh, with the court this morning. Yes, and I I looked, just skimmed it all. So right, just tell me quickly if you would. Well, Merrimack um, was the original party to the mortgage. It assigned uh, the mortgage um, at the closing and. A mortgage, an assignment was ultimately um, recorded um, at the registry in July of 2007. It's a, an assignment for Merrimack um, to Auction 1. Okay. And uh, there was a subsequent assignment um, 
through a power of attorney, apparently, uh, to, uh, to option one in 2009. And then the registry also has an assignment from uh, an entity by the name of Sand Canyon Corporation, formerly known as option one, to Wells Fargo in, uh, looks like September 7 of this year, uh, which was recorded at the registry. I've not been in, I've not had any contact with anybody from Wells Fargo or American Home or any of the other respondents in the case. I just contrived your role on us when I asked you the first question. <laughs> Tell me just by practice, who holds the original mortgage document of all of these assignments along the way? Well, I, my understanding, Your Honor, is uh, that in this particular case, in the practice at Merrimack Mortgage with respect to um, dealings with option one was that at the closing, uh, the, the, the original closing. documents are all signed, Merrimack Mortgage maintain, essentially scans the documents, maintains a copy, and because it was an assignment signed at the closing, all of the originals are shipped to option one. It's not where they went from there as the subsequently down the chain, I don't know, and, and Merrimack Mortgage has no idea. So your client has an original scan, um, the scan of the original signed documents? Yes. Okay. And do you have a copy of that? I have a copy, but that is not the original wedding signature that I'm saying. But you have a copy of the, have copy you have a copy with a signature on it. So I have all the copies. Um, but I do have a point to make about the assignments. And th these are just questions that I have because Mary Mack assigned it to option one just as he stated in 2007 and it was never reassigned back to Mary Mack. But then Mary Mack assigned it a second time to Wells Fargo in 2009. And, and I have a question about that. And then it was assigned from Sand Canyon to Wells Fargo. So it was assigned twice to Wells Fargo uh, by two different parties and Sand Canyon uh, after it was already assigned to Wells Fargo, then it would have no longer been party to Sand Canyon. So in other words, it's questions in the chain of assignments. All right. So um, you don't disagree uh, that you signed a mortgage originally. You don't. You don't uh, take. It, you don't come to the court saying you never signed a mortgage and borrowed the money. And you, you don't uh, take issue. Well, borrowed the money. There's right alone. Yeah. I've requested a statement of account, and they sent me, well, not this party here, but uh, the other parties. They and sent to who, me. What party have you been communicating with? Um, Sheckman has mostly taken it over. They're, they're the lawyers uh, representing. And have you made a formal They're part of AMC and Wells Fargo. Okay. And have you made a formal request for uh, the wet uh, document? Yes. And it's proof of standing. And um, and how does that prove standing for you? How does that? Yeah. Say that say that uh, the actual uh, mortgage remained in option on the scam. How will that prove to you that Wells Fargo now is entitled to or or, or not to foreclose? Well, my understanding, I believe it was broken up into a lot of derivatives and is securitized and that there's issues with that. So I'm questioning if there is an original wet ink signature of mortgage and note together um, that any one party holds. And I would like to, I need to see that before, you know, in other words, I, my belief is that the sales should be nullified since nobody came forward to show that they had standing to sell. KingCast.net, civil rights with a vengeance. You go, girl.